And welcome back to NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlewin, where we've been sharing some of the pros and cons about the pending Trans-Pacific Trade Partnership, or TPP, with a group of U.S. beef cattle industry experts from across America. And Jack, as we talk about the pending TPP, which is kind of stuck, if you will, in our nation's Congress, what message are we really sending our allies if TPP fails or just continues to be delayed? It, failure, in, in my opinion, failure is not an option. I, the United States has been at the table. We're, the United States is the, the leader in global commerce and needs to continue in that position. I think uh, lack of passage sends a huge question uh, and a pause to our trading partners as to our commitment to follow through on agreements that we've been at the table for several years in developing. Again, I, we can't stress enough the benefits that are in there for uh, beef producers for the United States and uh, not only just for us to benefit our, our new customers uh, and existing customers internationally. You know, Missy, we kind of talked about it earlier in the program that, you know, there's a lot of other countries involved with the TPP trade deal they're not going to wait around for us, and, and if we continue to stall, we're just only hurting ourselves as an industry. Exactly. If, if we continue to stall on TPP, then we're going to continue to lose market share in our beef industry and in exporting to these countries. Somebody else is going to take up the, the slack on where we're lacking. And instead of somebody else doing that, I would prefer for us to take their market share. I would prefer to send more of U.S. product over there than them taking ours. Russell, yeah. an, an important thing in terms of uh, capacity in our industry, one of the challenges we've seen with the reduction in our herd is a challenge that to maintain our capacity in our industry from top to bottom. Uh, TPP represents an excellent opportunity for us to maintain a vibrant background in cattle feeding and processing industry which benefits and feeds into our ports. In Washington State we're extremely benefit. We've got the industry from ranch to rail, uh, but the, the challenge we face is we can't produce enough cattle in Washington State alone to sustain two packing plants and I think that can be extrapolated out across the country. We need to make sure we've got the market to export the product to make sure we can operate these plants, our feedlots, and our ranches at the highest capacity possible to ensure that we're economically viable now and into the future. You know, we've been talking a lot about the Japanese market, but another big market in the Pacific Rim, obviously, is China, and it's been closed to U.S. beef since 2003. Kevin, what impact would TPP approval have on this huge potential market? Like I stated earlier, it would have a huge impact, especially it relates to China going into the future. There's no doubt that China will want to join TPP once it gets agreed to and is put into place. And so if that comes to be and China opens up access uh, unlimited to uh, for the U.S. beef, it's going to represent essentially billions of dollars in the future for all of us. And so uh, that's hugely important. And so the U.S. can be a leader in the trade in the Pacific Rim. China can come in and also participate. But for us to have open that market, live cattle and meat and all our other products, it's going to represent billions of dollars and billions of dollars. And all the way back to our ranch, that's going to help keep us in business. As I like to tell people, I'm the fifth generation. Uh, my wife, June, and I have a granddaughter now, our first one. She represents the seventh generation. It's going to take things like that, a success to have those extra billions of dollars going overseas to help keep our seventh generation on the ground and being successful. So, Jack, let me ask you this. With the Chinese negotiators using beef access as leverage for larger compromises with the U.S. negotiators, how important is that Chinese market and is there a place the U.S. should be drawing the line on when it comes to concessions? I, I think the, the Chinese market is essential when we look to the future and I think it's very important that the United States be at the table and that we be uh, right there uh, uniformly and, and bilaterally discussing this with China. It, it, we need to be at the table, we need to stay at the table. Uh, we can't afford to have the terms dictated to us. Uh, we just need an even field between the United States and Canada, and I'm certain that we'll come up with something that will work. The industry will survive uh, on both sides, and the, at the end of the day, we're going to have uh, happy customers, uh, but we can't afford to wait. Uh, the Chinese market's far too important and valuable to us. 
Yeah, it sure is. Well, stay with us. We're going to have some more insights from our panel of industry experts right after this.